Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, DJI introduces the Phantom 4 quadcopter, NASA at work on a quieter supersonic transport, air service to Cuba increases. I'm Brie Cross, it's March 4th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. When the price of the DJI Phantom 3 aircraft was cut last month, the internet was buzzing with speculation about a new quadcopter from DJI. It turns out that buzz was justified. On March 1st, they unveiled the DJI Phantom 4, which the company says can autonomously avoid obstacles in flight. According to the company, the Phantom 4 has optical sensors that send information to the central processor in the aircraft so that if it gets too close to an obstacle, it stops. If it sees a way to go over or around the object, it will. Through the first-person view interface, the company says the Phantom 4 can be flown without using the control sticks. The operator can tap the screen where it wants the aircraft to go, and it will fly there while autonomously avoiding obstacles. It will also autonomously track a subject in motion without the need for the subject to be equipped with additional tracking hardware. The company also says the camera system has been improved and the aircraft will fly up to 28 minutes on a single charge. The return of supersonic passenger air travel is one step closer to reality, with NASA's award of a contract for the preliminary design of a low-boom flight demonstration aircraft. This is the first in a series of X-planes in NASA's new Aviation Horizons initiative introduced in the agency's fiscal year 2017 budget. NASA selected a team led by Lockheed Martin Aeronautics Company of Palmdale, California to complete a preliminary design for quiet supersonic technology. After conducting feasibility studies and working to better understand acceptable sound levels across the country, NASA's Commercial Supersonic Technology Project asked industry teams to submit design concepts for a piloted test aircraft that can fly at supersonic speeds, creating a supersonic soft thump rather than the disruptive boom currently associated with supersonic flight. The new aviation Horizons X-planes will typically be about half scale of a production aircraft and likely are to be piloted. Design and build will take several years with aircraft starting their flight campaign around 2020, depending on funding. After the break, Sunrise Airways expands service to Cuba. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. More airline service is being planned for Cuba as Haiti-based Sunrise Airways has expanded its service with the launch of its first ever flight to Camagüey. The new route is the first to feature the carrier's new 46-seat ATR-42-320 aircraft, which was added to the Sunrise fleet last month. Philippe Bayard, president of Sunrise Airways, said in part, quote, These new flights to Camagüey build upon the success of our regularly scheduled service to Santiago de Cuba, which has performed very well since its initial launch in October 2014. Bayard also said that the airline intends to provide more flights into Cuba than any other international airline. He said that as they add larger aircraft like the ATR-42, it puts them in a strong position to provide additional service. Connecting service will also be available through Port-au-Prince. It's Friday, and that normally means that it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. However, when we last talked to Jim, he was in the process of heading back from the Heli Expo 2016 and couldn't make it to the studio in time to record barnstorming. Jim does say he was able to fly some awesome equipment at the Heli Expo, and we are sure to get an earful when he returns. After these messages, the Kansas Aviation Museum is seeking financial help. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. 
Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Kansas Aviation Museum is in serious financial straits, according to the Wichita Eagle newspaper. They say the health of the museum is critical to the standing of Wichita as the air capital of the world and are asking the city for help. Sikorsky recognized the County of Los Angeles Fire Department with Sikorsky Rescue Awards for five crew members involved with life-saving efforts in August of last year. Sikorsky President Dan Schultz presented the awards to Battalion Chief Joel Harrison at Heli Expo 2016. The 99th Women's Aviation Organization and EAA will award the $3,000 Karen Johnson Solo Scholarship to provide a young woman with financial support for flight training. The scholarship will be awarded during the Women Venture Activities at EAA Air Venture 2016. Rockwell Collins' latest solutions for helicopters will be playing a key role in the Gulf of Mexico on the first two AW-189 heavy helicopters delivered to Air Group. Rockwell Collins equipment includes MFD 2810 display and their ProLine 21 communication suite. Magellan Aerospace said that a wire strike protection system will soon be available for the Robinson R66 helicopter. The system is comprised of an upper cutter, lower cutter, and windshield deflector. An STC is expected in the first quarter of this year. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The first Italian Augusta Westland AW-101 helicopter, designated the HH-101A Caesar, was placed into operational service last week during an official ceremony in Italy. A total of four of these helicopters, out of a total requirement of 15, have been delivered from the manufacturer to date, and it will be used to perform personnel recovery and special forces missions. The HH-101As will also support search and rescue, medical evacuation, and slow mover intercept operations. According to the manufacturer, the HH-101A medium lift helicopter can carry a crew of 5 plus up to 20 fully equipped troops for special mission operations. They claim it is the most advanced and capable aircraft available today to meet its operational requirements. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Have a great weekend. We will see you Monday.